and welcome back to WCCF Tech Lab guys and this is Keith again and today we're gonna have a little bit of fun with showing you guys how we took our Radeon RX 484 gigabyte on up to a Radeon RX 8 gigabyte now it's pretty simple actually now that Tech Power Up has updated their ATI when uh, the ATI flash 2 to 2.74 with Polaris um, support so that you can say back up your um, your BIOS file and then well change it to a different BIOS if you wanted to now before we get into this I just want to uh, make it very clear that this isn't something that is going to always work and it's not something that you should just rush out and do unless you know what you're doing this should be something you're familiar with I've done this quite a bit in the past with other cards uh, a lot of times I'll take uh, a factory overclock card and put a reference BIOS on it to see the performance variations between a, the default and the overclock. But first off, you're going to need this. This is the ATI Flash uh, 2.74. Then we'll put links to that in the description below. Now this is also GPU-Z and you'll need it to monitor the card that you're using as far as the, specifically for us here, the memory size. You can see all the other things. All the other settings with it as far as the bus width, bandwidth, uh, memory speed, capacity, yada yada. And you can use this to monitor the uh, usage of each, being the core, the memory clock, the temperature, all of that stuff. So you'll need it to basically make sure that it, well, it worked. Um, then you're going to need a BIOS that you're going to use. Luckily, the guys over at Overclock.net, a newcomer actually joined yesterday by the name of uh, Paromi or Paromi. He actually posted the XFX um, RX 480 OC edition. And why that's important is because ours is a, an F XFX model. And over on the Tech Power Up, if you go to their database, they have the RX 480 listed, but um, they got the review sample up. That, and it wouldn't work on mine because mine's an XFX model. The sub vendor blocked it from other vendors' BIOSes being put on it, which is not a bad thing as long as you can get your hand on one this again that's the RX 480 OC edition so that's the BIOS that we went with now this is um, GPU Z pulled up on here now I have flashed it and flashed it back so for some reason when I flashed it back the memory stayed at 2000 megahertz but it normally runs at 1750 and there it is you can see memory size is 4000 megabytes or 4 gigabytes for 40,096 uh, megabytes at 256 uh, bit and now the bandwidth says 256 because it's still running it two gigahertz so I just wanted to show you that now one thing we want to do real quick because I'm going to do all of this live so that you can see the whole process oh great we gotta wait for a steam update but what we're gonna do is load up let's see make sure I've got afterburner going while that's a loading because we want to monitor and I'm gonna make this as large as we can so that you guys can see it really good we're gonna use Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor because the resolution uh, settings in this game let you scale it without having to change the resolutions because I'm on a 14 or a 1080p uh, Nixius View 24A FreeSync monitor while doing this, and we want to see we got it right here. This is the number we're watching for. This is the usage for the memory. All right, apologize for that, guys. I kicked the camera, so we had to do a cut. All right, so we're going to go into options, and just to show you guys, the video is set to. 200% so it's essentially running at 3840 by 2160 and we're going to go down to advanced options we got it on ultra so that we push up the um, memory needed now over here you'll see it's 4352 megabytes all right so what we want to do real quick is just run the benchmark and we're going to run it just just for a few seconds so we're not going to run through the whole thing and oops, sorry and make you guys watch the whole thing what we're focusing on is memory usage here all right so here we go all right we're loaded into it and see it's kind of uh... all right so we're looking at see i mean we're getting up to about 3800 just around 3900 megabytes and i'm using plus 50 on the power limit so we're holding the full clock speed the 1266 all right so enough of that we've well actually i guess we're going to watch the whole thing here we're going to see go ahead and jot down and just keep note of where we end up at the end of this and we're going to see if it actually made a difference in the performance but what we really want to see here is uh, the usage again so pay attention there and 
and all right, there we go. Average of 33, minimum of 15. Now we'll just take those rough numbers. All right, we'll go ahead and leave this. Quit the desktop. Yes. All right, so we're out of here and got this pulled up here still. So, okay, now I guess because the card kicked in, it finally got reset. So it's showing 1750 on the memory with 224 on the mega on there. All right, now here's what we're essentially going to do. This is ATI Flash. I've already downloaded it. So we're going to, now this is, um, that's the reference of BIOS that I downloaded that won't work. But right down here is the eight gigabyte version file. So we're going to go ahead and run this as administrator. If you try to run it normally, it will not open. You have to run it as administrator. Okay, so this is what you're going to get. You can get the flash tool. Now, before we get in here, you're going to want to back up the BIOS. Now, a lot of people will want to go here and save the BIOS from GPU-Z. You do not want to do that because it's going to save 128 kilobyte file. And if you try to recover your base um, with that, you're, you want to recover, go back to your old BIOS, it's not going to work. It's going to corrupt it. It's a 512 kilobyte file. So if you save it, you need to do it from here. That'll save the full file. That's why I've got this one right here, um, just to give you a quick example. So uh, see there are 512 kilobytes. So let's go to GPU-Z just to show you what'll happen. So we're gonna do save file, and we're gonna save it to the desktop as Ellismere. Uh, all right, we saved it, and go to properties. It's a 128 kilobyte file. That'll brick your card. It will leave it useless. Do not, under any circumstances, do that. All right, so load image. So we knew we saved it here, the RX 480, uh, four gigabyte OC ROM. Go ahead and open it, hit program. Now it's gonna say, please wait, flashing in progress. It may take more than a minute. And now it's not responding. We'll give it a second and see if it catches. I'm gonna go ahead and close this while it's doing it. Uh oh. And there you go. See, sometimes it'll hang like that. It'll tell you that it's not doing anything. Um, go ahead and just be patient, wait it out. It says it was programmed successfully. Now we have to reboot it for the system, to, for the changes to take effect. So we're gonna go ahead and hit restart and we're gonna sit here patiently waiting because this X99 system takes forever to post, but usually it does pretty quick with this straight reboot. So bear with me here, folks. All right, there we go. In case anybody's wondering why this is going on, the system it's running on is a X99A2 from ASUS with an i7-6800K at stock with 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 at 2400 megahertz. So nothing crazy. I'm gonna go, now if you notice that flicker there, that is something really bizarre going on with the drivers right now. All you have to do to fix that, which it, you shouldn't have to, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 144 hertz. I'll hit okay there, it won't do it anymore. I have to do that every time I reboot with the 480. I'm gonna hope it's a driver issue because I've talked to some other people who have had the problem. All right, that is Reva Tuner telling me there's a problem with connecting to their database. All right, well, it's loading up Steam in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and open up CPU-Z because it's gonna take 30 minutes to open. <laughs> Even though this is all running off of an SSD, it's just an older SSD. All right, and we we'll go ahead and open up GPU-Z. Boom. Right here, we have 8192 megabytes. So it's seeing all of it. Now here's the catch. Right now, it's gonna show the memory is set to 1750, even though its default is 2000. So that's an easy thing to go in and fix. We'll just go into, uh, go ahead and turn that off. Go in to global settings and hope Wattman doesn't crash. There we go. All right, 1750. Let's, Take that on up to 2000. Now, once I run it, it should pick all that up and go to it and go to it naturally. But right now, it's just because you've changed so much stuff, the software. If you reinstalled the software, 
um, Radeon settings, it would be fine. See, then now it reads uh, 2000 megahertz, 256 bit with the 256 gigabytes of bandwidth. All right, so all that aside, let's go ahead and open up the sensors here. That way we can see um, memory control load, memory usage. There we go. Let's change that to max. Change our memory clock max. That way we can monitor all of these. We'll see how hot it gets while we run this. And we're going to do the same test with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor running at essentially 4K with ultra settings. Now, the reason, part of the reason I did Shadow of Mordor isn't just because the benchmark is so short, but because this is a game that when it came out, the ultra settings demanded that you have six gigabytes or more of. So this is going to be something, or a six gigabyte video card back when the original Titan was out. So we'll go back through the options to make sure they're set right. So full screen, 200%, 3840 by 2160. Um, okay, we'll go back and we go to advanced options and again this time you see 8448 megabytes so it, it's recognizing all of the memory still the same amount in the menus so what we're gonna have to do is go into the benchmark to see if it utilizes more than four gigs of, oh, and already you can see we've gone past it we're at four creeping up quite a bit there all right escape and here we are into the benchmark there we have it. Look at that. 5,490. Well, five, it, it's fluctuating around five and a half gigs of memory. So it's now our minimum is still somewhere around where it was on the low side because it's just the power. This GPU is not made for 4K gaming. But so you can expect dips down there like that. But you'll notice if you can remember it, it is way smoother across the board than it was. And we're still holding 1288 again, plus 50 on the power limit. I know somebody's going to be worried about my PCI Express slot, but I personally, I'm not that concerned. And memory again is running at 2000 megahertz versus the 1750. And our average is now 35 and our minimum is 16. So that's a little bit better. But we want to go back and quit to the desktop to make sure that according to GPU-Z. And there we go. 5500 megabytes. Um, again, 1288. It got up to 86 Celsius, so that's it's pretty hot. Um, again, it's flash, so and a plus 50 on the power limit. So if we had not done that, it probably would have wouldn't have gotten nearly as hot. Now again, that's the four gigabyte. Uh oh, well you get the point. Flash to the eight gigabyte version, guys. If you found this video interesting or informative, please drop us a like, drop us a comment, uh, and go ahead and subscribe while you're here. Because don't worry, this isn't the end of the content. And we'll catch you all in the next video.